It's going to be my privilege to introduce my senator, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about him. Senator Greg Evers, and he was elected to the Florida House of Representatives October the 16th, 2001, and he served as constituent for eight years until he was elected to the Florida Senate in November of 2010. His political experience includes chairman of the Criminal Justice Committee, which he still is, uh, he currently, he's vice chairman of transportation committee. He was elected to the class, well, I've got, I already said that. He's the chairman of the roads, bridges, and ports policy committee from 2008 to 2010, vice chair of the transportation and economic development appropriations committee, 2008 through 2010, and chairman of the Florida Legislator Joint Administrative Rules Committee, 2006 through 8, vice chair of the House Committee on Military and Veterans Affairs. Yep. They don't need finish, to know. And he's been a farmer since 1978. Peanuts, soybeans, cotton, corn, wheat, and strawberries. The best strawberries. Yep, that's what you do. Owner of Baker Farm Center since 1981. And a very, very strong advocate for Second Amendment rights, as you all know. So I'm going to now turn it over to Senator Greg Evers. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, they asked me if I could dress up a little bit. Uh, you know, I had on my shoes, my shoes, and I told them, I said, I did. I put on my boots. <laughs> These are the boots I wear in Tallahassee under my suits. They feel more comfortable than dress shoes. Uh, you know, there's been some questions about our Second Amendment and Stand Your Ground. I can assure you, your Second Amendment and Stand Your Ground is safe in the state of Florida. Amen. You know, one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, we had a sit-in there uh, in Tallahassee where a group had come in and sat in the governor's office and wasn't going to leave and this kind of stuff. Okay, they had been promised. Let me tell you what the promise was. We'll lay it all out there where you understand. They were promised there will be two hearings. There will be one in the House and one in the Senate. Now, Senator, uh, I mean, Representative Matt Gates asked me if it's okay for him to bring it up in his criminal justice committee and kill it. I said, that's fine with me. Bring it up and kill it. Okay, they asked me as being center, uh, the Senate criminal justice chair, would I hear the bill? I said, just like I heard it last year. I said, well, you didn't hear it last year. I said, okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they said, well, is it okay if we send it to judiciary and put you a second reference? I said, that's not a problem. Send it to judiciary. If it doesn't pass, I mean, if it does pass judiciary, I'll take care of it just like I did last year. So it's not a problem. But I can assure you that it will not get past me and your Second Amendment is safe and stand your ground. Now, is there some changes that need to be made and stand your ground? There's some slight tweaks that needs to be made. Slight tweaks. It's not going to affect what the what the bill actually does, but what it is going to do is going to give some more clarifying language to the uh, to the attorney, uh, the state's attorneys throughout the state that gets sort of confused. You know, if they were using the right frame of mind to start with, number one, we wouldn't have had to have stand your ground. But but they get a little confused sometimes. Now there's a there's something out there that I want to that I want to correct and I want to fix. And that's if you have a concealed carry weapon, and well just let me tell you a little story. Seventy-two year old man, and I may not have all the particulars, I want to clarify this because I might ad lib a little bit. But the gist of the gist of the story will be accurate, okay? 72-year-old man goes over to visit a friend of his. Her son, uh, her grandson, comes up to come in the house, and the uh, elderly lady is living with her daughter, and so her daughter had told her mother, do not let the son in the house because of various reasons, drugs or stealing or whatever. So the grandmother tells the son, or grandson, you know, you're not coming in the house. 
And of course the grandson has some buddies with him, you know, and he's going to show Granny that he's going to come in the house. Okay? So the guy steps out on the porch, has a concealed carry permit, he pulls his gun and he fires a warning shot into the ground to tell him to get out. Get out of there. Okay. Right now, in Florida law, when he fired that warning shot, he's eligible for 20 years in prison. 20 years for firing a warning shot. Now, the state attorney, now if this would have happened up in the panhandle, we wouldn't have had a problem. <laughs> I mean, we take care of things up there like this, okay? But this happened over in Jacksonville, where those folks don't fully understand the Second Amendment. That's the reason we have to clarify it through Florida law and statute. So anyway, they tried to make a deal with a with an elderly man that's 72 years old that's about to die of cancer in a couple of years and offered him three years in prison. He said, I'm not going to take the plea. Okay, but because of Florida law, he wound up being sentenced to 20 years. The jury actually gave him 20 years because they were caught in a catch-22. He fired the shot. We intend on changing that legislation. Okay? Now, me, the warning shot should have been in somebody's chest and then it wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> Okay? You never pull a gun unless you intend on using it. Okay? But for those that want to fire a warning shot, it needs to be correct. And we intend on doing that this year. Okay? Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of talk about concealed carry and open carry and whether you can carry on college campus, whether you can carry on schools and this kind of stuff. Okay, this next year, I have filed a bill that will reenact the open carry with concealed carry permit. You will be able to carry your weapon open. And we're hoping, and, you know, we're hoping that the House will pick up on it. I, I look for the House to actually pass the bill. Our trouble is going to be in the Senate. Um, you know, the lady that was up here a while ago, we were talking about John uh, Coleman and, uh, what's it, Paul. and Paul Henry. Those two guys do a wonderful job representing your interest, whether you know it or not. They, those guys come in my office and, you know, we talk about the legislation, we talk about things that we might could do, things that we could pass or, or whatever. Uh, I filed some bills for John before. Some has got some committee hearings. Uh, and he really comes up with some great ideas. But, you know, that gives you somebody in Tallahassee, those two guys, like I said, I mean, you know, they worked on the red light cameras. Uh, there's going to be some changes made to the red light cameras this next year. Uh, which is something that we all have pushed for. Uh, the other thing that I think that you're going to be, you know, sort of surprised at, you know, because government, once they get it, they never give it back. Do you understand what I'm saying? If government can ever get their hand in your pocket, it's hard to get them out of it. Um, you know, and in the past two years, I have filed the repeal of the uh, license plate increase that we had back uh, several years ago, we will repeal part of that fee this year. Of course, you know, <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, I'm an outsider and I'm not considered uh, on the inside of uh, the leadership there in the Senate because I represent the folks back home, folks like you, uh, folks like me, you know, because I'm one of you. And so uh, I'm not going to be able to carry the bill, but I will be a prime co-sponsor uh, on the legislation. Uh, Joe Negron 
uh, that's running for uh, president of the Senate uh, is going to file the bill because they're going to pass it this year. Uh, after, you know, I filed a bill for two years prior to that, but they're going to pass it this year, so, uh, you know, Joe gets to carry the bill now, you know. I've carried the water, Joe gets to carry the bill. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's the point that you continue on, you keep, you know, how do you eat an elephant, you know? You do it one bite at a time. And that is the way that, uh, you know, I deal with the legislation in Tallahassee. And you know what, at the end of the day, I don't care who passes the bill, as long as it's the right thing. And I'll be the first to tell you that the increase that we made on license plates three or four years ago was in excess, should not have happened, and I want to apologize to you personally for allowing that. Uh, I've always been told it takes a big man to stand up and say I'm sorry and, and uh, you know, and try to do the right thing. Um, that's about all the news that I can tell you that's happening on the, on the front other than, you know, as Chair of Criminal Justice, and I got something I want to run, run by you folks here in just a minute, and we're going to have a little poll. <laughs> Don't y'all like polls? Yeah. Well, absolutely. That way you know what folks are thinking about if you have a little poll. Okay. If you were caught with nine Laura tab. Nine Laura tab, that's a painkiller. Oh, okay. It's a prescription drug. If you're caught with nine Laura tab, you get three to five years in state prison. Okay. It's costing me approximately uh, $30,000 a year to incarcerate somebody. So if you get three years, it's gonna cost we, the taxpayers, $90,000. Okay, for $30,000 a year, I can give somebody drug treatment. In fact, I can give five people drug treatment or six people for that same $30,000. The question is, am I better to incarcerate somebody or am I better to get them drug treatment? Okay, so that's the question that I need answered. Am I better to incarcerate or put them in prison for three years? Or am I much wiser with my money to get them drug treatment? Okay, and do a diversion is what I was gonna do. Or you won't ask a question, or are you just adjusting your glasses? You know, I get in trouble sometimes because I adjust my glasses. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, ma'am, what's the question? You probably can't give an intelligent vote on that unless you knew how successful drug treatment is on people. Or how many times they didn't caught with them. Okay, well, now this is for first time offenders. I can clarify that. This is for first time offenders. And I don't know how successful it's going to be because it's their first time. Do they want drug treatment? And do they want drug treatment? Absolutely. Okay. All right, now wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can only talk one at a time. No, wait a minute. Huh? Oh, God. I got to have one with a cord? Okay, we'll swap. You just want me to shut up, then. Okay. All right. I think that guy over there has got a question. And then I won't have a vote on this now. You said that we like the poll. I thought you meant with a line and a wig on the end of it. I'm sure they got lakes down here we might be fishing. Yes, sir. Senator Evers, uh, uh, I don't mean to insult you for a bit, but I'd like to ask a question is, who says, give, who gives you the right to say whether a man can pass the drugs or not? Amen. Who says, who gives me the right to say the man can have the drugs? Or not. Or not. <laughs> or not have the drugs? Yeah. Why can't he have drugs? Is it, is, is it hurting you? Is it hurting me? What is it doing? Well, this is prescription drugs that's, uh, that's actually, uh, regulated by
by the state to start with. Okay? And you have to have a doctor's prescription in order to get the drugs. Okay? Well, we'll get to the arrest of the doctor in another story. Let's stick, listen, y'all get me confused. I, I had a simple question and y'all tried to take and rewrite the dang book. That's the question. Okay. Well, wait a minute. We, we try to get answers to all the questions where we can have the poll. Yes, well, ma'am. First of all, war cab sucks. <laughs> I had never had a good Lord. <laughs> exactly. If the person that would have my Lord tab doesn't have too much of a problem, I understand where you're going. And I, I, I can really think it was the first time a finger because obviously he doesn't have a prescription on file for not a Lord tab or whatever his brother choice is. We would be much better stewards of the taxpayer's money to Okay. See, you could have just voted that way and you wouldn't have given all the explanation. And then I wouldn't have known the education part of what you was trying to tell me that Lord taps up to start with. <laughs> Senator Drivers, thank you very much for your Second Amendment stance. My question is just back to the Second Amendment. We don't require permission from the government payment of a fee, background checks, to write a dangerous editorial because of the First Amendment. Why does the state require background checks, payment of a fee, and permission to carry a firearm in any manner, open or concealed? That was done before I ever got to the legislature. That was done in 1986, I believe. And uh, prior to 1986, you could have strapped on your gun and you could have walked down the street. Okay, then somebody got the wise idea, well, we want them to carry a concealed. And the sheriffs in the state of Florida actually fought that, that bill to allow for concealed with a permit. I mean, they fought it tooth and nail. They said, at that time, they said, look, if a person's got a gun on, we know who's got the gun. If they carry it concealed, then we don't know who has the gun. So they fought the bill, and ultimately it was passed. Now, all I'm saying is, and, and the sheriffs are fighting me on the deal now, when I say, let them wear it open. That way you know who's got the gun. You know, but the sheriffs are fighting me on that, but it's okay. They're going to love me anyway. Senator Evers, I appreciate you. You're a good. I've never met you before, never seen you, never wrote before you, and honestly didn't know who you were, but I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You should give them their nine pills if they take them all at once. <laughs> well, see, that's what the problem is. That's what the problem is. Because a lot of the folks that has those nine pills are taking them all at once because they're looking for that bigger high. But it's not enough to take them out, okay? If it's enough to take them out, then it might be a different story. But the point that I'm really trying to get at here is the fact that we can treat, you know, five or six folks for what it cost me to incarcerate one. Sure. Okay, here's something else I want to put on you and then I'll answer some more questions because it actually gives you something else to think about. What if I told you that I could reduce the number of inmates in state prison by one third by changing this law? Sure. By one third. Okay, now it's going to take me three years to do that because those that are in prison, we're going to let finish their sentence. This is for new people. This is new people. 
but one third of the inmates, and you'll never reduce it by a full third, because you know there's going to be some some folks that has done this twice or something like that that uh, didn't have to clean up to start with. And those folks are the ones that you know are, will ultimately go to prison. But what we're looking at doing is raising that from nine lower cap up to thirty lower cap. Okay, and that will solve most of the problems that we have with the folks that have a drug addiction. Anything over that, yes, you're trafficking. And if you're trafficking, full out trafficking, it can get you upwards of 15 years. And you know, that's not being soft on crime. To me, that's being smart on crime. If a person has a problem, get them the help that they need. If they don't have a problem, then, you know, they need to do their time. As long as they don't do the crime, they need to do their time. Yes, ma'am? My question is about guns again, because we like guns in here. I know, you like guns. I do like guns. Thank you Have very Have you got much your gun? Take. Of course I do. Okay. Mine's in my truck. Mine's with me. Well, I understand. <laughs> That's the reason I didn't bring mine in, because I knew you were going to be here. I was just going to get past you. I was going to get behind you if all something happened. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, is about a, the 1020 life law. There, I'm sure you know about the case in Jacksonville where the lady went out to the car. The man had her children locked in her house and she went out to her car, went inside the house with a gun, fired a warning shot to the wall and she's in jail right now. What are you guys doing to rectify this situation? <laughs> That goes back to the same situation where I was talking about the elderly gentleman that was 72 years old, has cancer, probably die in the next two years, and they put him in jail for three. Now, that happened to be overturned by a judge that was a little smarter than the average bear. He used a little common sense. Okay, the lady that you're talking about is still in jail. Right. And that's what we're going to change. That's what we're after, is changing that portion. If you fire that warning shot, that it doesn't fall under 1020 life. So absolutely, we're going to. Yeah, this session, we should change that. Okay, next question. Does, does what you just told us mean that if we repeal the concealed carry permit law, that we're, that we're back to open carry without permit? No, what I'm telling you is, is if you have a concealed carry permit, that you would be allowed to open and carry. Oh, okay. My other question is... Uh, I mean, you are a car toter, aren't you? Yeah, but I, I don't like the permit because I'm not sure what you guys are going to do with it. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't think you should have to have a permit, but that was passed before I got in the legislature. Thank you. Now, the other question I have is... Uh, if you fire at somebody and miss, does that count as a warning shot? <laughs> no, that counts as you're a bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, going back to the drug issue and the treatment, yeah. um, if, if you do the treatment and you're going to, is it going to be mandatory for them to have to stay in? The treatment, have a center somewhere. Yes, yes. Kind of, kind of they, like a person, but actually, like actually, let me let me continue on with a little bit of that. It's for first-time offenders, and you sign a contract. And if you deviate or you break the contract, then you go to jail. Okay. Yes, ma'am. In the back. Or right. well, no, right here. All right. Well, I'll take it. Uh, Mama always said, if you're going to pull that gun, you better be willing to use it. So if you fear for your life and you have to pull it and pull it to shoot, you need to be shooting at somebody. Yeah. I don't know that I'm in agreement with a warning shot. Uh, and you need a little bit more training is what no. I think. No, what, what the deal is, is if you fire a warning shot. It, it's your determination whether you fire a warning shot or you put it in his chest. Okay? Unless you miss, like him. He's a bad shot. That's the reason he was worried about it. 
He's a bad shot. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to know if you, I can have your ear after the meeting for about five minutes. Could you just talk to me without cutting my ear off? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. All right, put it on me back there. Okay. Um, why not? You don't have to speak up. This guy up here, he why? ain't got his ear and they turned up. Is it on? Okay. Why not save us all the money and make them pay for it? That's very true. And, and here's the deal on that. Most of the folks that's in that situation are the ones that's robbing your homes and stealing your TVs and, and the other things. And so uh, ultimately we can pay for it one way or the other because they don't have the money to pay for it. And something else that we're looking at that we're trying to implement is I'm trying as chair of criminal justice, I'm trying to implement the full 36 months as far as a work release to where that person is actually paying their way, they're actually uh, getting the education they need, plus they're learning a job or a skill, and they will have a job prior to coming out of prison so they will not go, turn around and go back in. If I can get a person that's in prison a job with training for that job, he is like 80-something percent more likely not to go back to prison. If I turn him out and give him his $50, because we give him $50, used to be 100 but you know, hey, times got bad, so we cut him to 50 All right, so we give him $50, and he goes out. Chances of him coming back is like 70-something percent that he's gonna turn around and reoffend. Why? He has no support, especially a person that's been in prison for let's say 35, 40, 45 years. He has no support. Most of his family have already gone. He has nobody to rely on. Plus he has not, he doesn't have a job. So chances of him coming back, hey, he's got three squares and he's got a cot to lay in. And it's like 70 or better percent that he's coming back. Okay, yes ma'am. Yes, Senator Evers. Um, I was looking back through last year. Okay, you got a computer, that's not fair. Yes. I don't have my <laughs> I, uh, I was looking back through last year's session because I thought that you were the sponsor of the Medicaid eligibility um, 1748, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not quite sure if that's the one that was addressing the personal care contracts, where the attorneys are helping the kids to set up contracts in order to transfer money so they can get people eligible, their parents eligible for Medicaid nursing home care by hiding the assets. Is that? You, you no. Know, what you, What we did on that particular bill, uh, which it didn't go anywhere. Uh huh. That bill that I had yeah, did not pass. Real right. But what we were trying to do was fix it to where uh, that you had to make that determination like years before. You couldn't do it. In other words, if you were fixing to go into a nursing home and you were expecting the state to pick up the tab, that's not the way it worked unless you had already divested all of your assets years before. Okay, that's covered by federal regulation. I understand. With the look back. Right. Yeah. But what we were also trying to do was clarify what those assets were. Uh -huh. Was the 1748 where the personal care contracts? I'm just wondering if this fight is going to, this would be the second year that they brought legislation uh, to try to, to what try this, to tap down all of this. What the legislation that I care. have was actually brought to me by uh, children and family. Yeah. It was right. actually brought to me. Right. And that's when we put all the attorneys in a room and they couldn't come up with that's an agreement. The same bill. That's the one. Yeah. And they couldn't come up with agreement, so it didn't do anything. Yeah. Well maybe we can talk about that. Sure. I guess you want the other ear, right? <laughs> okay, well, pick we're not the yet. Yeah, well pick your glasses up before I step on. 
Yes, sir. Senator Evers, sir, in due respect, I profile you as a politician. <laughs> now, you gave this small room of people your solid guarantee in regards to the Second Amendment. We don't even have a well-regulated militia in Florida, a citizen's militia. How are we going to defend ourselves against so-called Commander-in-Chief Obama? Okay, well, first of all, I hate to, to correct you, but we do have a militia in Florida. National Guard? No, it's not National Guard. It's the militia in Santa Rosa County. We got smart in Santa Rosa County, and we formed the militia. That's true. Am I telling the truth? Actually, the commissioner in Santa Rosa County made a resolution to make every citizen in Santa Rosa County a member of the militia. That's one county out of 67, isn't it? Well, that's it. And you need to make the decision. What county do you live in? Alachua. Alachua? I bet you that you could take and get folks at Alachua to do the same thing. But they're not well regulated. Well, I got news for you. I don't know if you can well regulate Alachua County or not. But in Santa Rosa County, we don't have that problem. And, and something else I want to clarify for you. I'm far from being a politician. You know, I am one of the folks that I represent. And it makes it very easy for me to make decisions on bills, whether it's right or it's wrong. Because I am one of the folks that I represent. And so I'm as far from being a politician as you can get. I was fortunate enough that some folks decided that maybe I could take a little common sense to Tallahassee. And I was tasked with that duty. It wasn't that I necessarily wanted it, but I was tasked with that duty. I've been very thankful for the folks that voted for me because it's given me opportunities to, to make changes that I would not believe anybody else that was sent to Tallahassee during that time would actually strive for those changes. You know, one of the, one of the bills that I had when I was in the House, and this is, you know, from being from Milwaukee, you'll probably understand this. DOT stopped two tractors driving down the road and wrote them a thousand dollar ticket apiece. And all they were doing was moving from one peanut field to the next. I immediately got on the phone. I told the Secretary of DE of uh, Transportation. I said, you know, I have told you this was going to happen. Now you've crossed the line. I said, call the dogs off. We're not fooling with any more. And we'll fix this in session. Because for two years prior to that, I told her that it was something that we needed to address. And she told me that we would lose federal highway funds. I said, well, it's amazing to me. Alabama don't lose highway funds. You know, because I am from L.A. The panhandle is lower Alabama. <laughs> And because of that, I think a lot like those folks in Alabama. And so anyway, now, if it's 24 foot wide or less with blinking lights on the outside, it may take you a little longer to get to the grocery store because one of those tractors are in your way, but he perfectly has the right to drive the highways in the state of Florida. You know, about 70% of the bills, or probably 80% of the bills, that I carry are brought to me by constituents. And give me, sit down. I don't want you to just stand up. I got another story I need to tell. <laughs> two fourth grade students brought to me, and I'll, I'm going to give them the two minute version. I'm not going to give them the nine minute version. Two fourth grade students brought to me that in God we trust was not the official state motto of the state of Florida 
and had never been placed in the Florida statute. I looked at those students and I said, there's no way. They said, yes, sir. We did it as a research project and it's absolutely never been done. I called the Secretary of State. They checked on it. They called me back in three hours and said, they're right. It's never officially been designated as the motto of the state of Florida. I called the parents of the kids because I knew the parents. I called the parents and I said, bring the kids back up here. I want to talk with them. They came back up. I said, guys, you're right. We're fixing to file a bill to change that. So we filed a bill. I took the bill once we got it made. I took it over to, uh, I believe it was Senator Durrell Peden uh, that had my Senate seat prior to me getting it. And he carried it in the Senate. Those two students, I had three committee stops and then the floor. All three committee stops, I opened, I presented the bill to start with, and then I allowed the students to tell their story. We passed the bill, and I'm proud to say that in God we trust is the official state motto of the state of Florida. But the thing about it is, even two fourth grade students got their say. So, you know, when you talk about me being a politician, I represent the people. And I don't take that as a political one. I think that as a business. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, under the concealed carry law, I've seen many times where if you can see the silhouette of that weapon, I believe that individual's clothes. I've seen people arrested and convicted for carrying that weapon in the car. When you go out to Tallahassee, I think the weapon was put. And number two, you said that we had nothing to worry about as far as the Second Amendment and the Peace of the Do you know for a fact that we will have the right to some shoes to wear a hood? Okay, I want to repeat that where I can be sure that I got it right. And what you were telling me was that if a person, uh, their gun became exposed, that the law would write him a ticket or, or whatever and charge him with uh, brandishing a firearm or whatever. And yes, that is a problem. We thought we had it corrected, but law enforcement still is a problem. They're like the uh, attorney, uh, uh, the prosecuting attorneys. Sometimes you have to spell it out in law, black and white. And yes, there still is a problem with that, even though law enforcement agreed, uh, the chamber, the retail federation, NRA, everybody agreed that we had it fixed year before last. And then it comes back up. And I'm sure that that will be included, and that may be part of the part of the negotiations in order to straighten out the standard ground. That that actually be straightened out also. Okay. Yes, sir. Senator, uh, thank you for being here. Hey, who's giving y'all all these questions? <laughs> I mean, when somebody read, when somebody stands up with a piece of paper, it makes me think like somebody give test questions or something. <laughs> No, go ahead. We, we won't do that to you. Last week, uh, Matt Getz asked us to make sure to show up for his hearing. He's absolutely 100% certain they're going to bus in. The opposition is going to bus in a ton of people to flood the hearing hall and uh, try to make a statement. So he asked all of us to show up. Uh, how do you feel? I mean, I have a list here of his committee members and your committee members. Should we be in contact? Should we be telling them? You know, absolutely leave the law alone, uh, you know, don't repeal it, or what's your advice on that? And also about showing up. I think we need to show up. I think, I think it would be great because uh, when you show up, you do two things. You make a statement of where you are, 
plus the fact you show unity when you show up like that. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, as far as the, uh, uh, what was the next question in there? Oh, the committee members. Well, I wouldn't worry about my committee members right now. I would concentrate on judiciary. Uh, but no, it, it's fine to reach out to Matt Gates, his committee members, because uh, he's first man that brought it up. So yes, I would reach out to them and uh, give them the cover that they need to vote the right way, and that's to uh, to kill Stan Brown. Okay, and he has a list of those in the back that you can uh, that you can get. And you know, it's great to send emails. It's wonderful if you'll write a letter, but a phone call or having the eye contact with your representatives and senators means so much more. It means so much more. You know, because we run a we run a test. We run a test uh, on any on any issue that comes up. We try to, you know, how many emails we have for it, how many emails we got against it, this kind of stuff. As long as it agrees with my upbringing, I just want to clarify that clarify that for a lot of back there. Um, as long as it agrees with my upbringing, I'm all for it. If not, then we throw that test out and we just go with my gut feeling. Uh, but you know, the thing about it is, how many of you actually know your representative? Okay, how many of you have your representative cell number? Okay, how many of you know your senator? Okay, how many of you have their cell number? Okay, now. Why don't you use those? That's the way to make it count. If you make that phone call and you, to yourself, and chances are when he's running, because the representatives, they have to run every two years. When he's running, get involved in his campaign. It don't take a lot of money because, you know, He's going to get the money. What he needs is bodies on the ground, putting up signs, making phone calls, that kind of stuff. And that means so much. But you know what you do? You build a friendship, camaraderie. You build a relationship to where when you pick up that cell phone and you make that call, he knows exactly who you are because he knows the hours and the time that you put in his campaign. And you can influence him, trust me. You can make a difference. So yes, to answer your question, I would reach out to those. Yes, sir. Senator, uh, I like your choice of color of your shirt. You what? You like the color of my shirt? Yes, sir. Yeah. I got the memo. I'd like to remind you that one of our greatest statesmen in the world, one of the smartest people in the, in the Democrat Party, Joe Biden, recommended that his wife go out and fire two morning shots. Oh, yeah. Also, your, your DOT needs a little bit of uh, tweaking. I got pulled over a couple of weeks ago driving back from uh, Columbia Green with an empty truck and got fined 600 and change for overweight. <laughs> and I suggested that the guy go to my office and try to get this thing straightened out. And he said, we don't do that kind of thing. So I think your DOT needs to have a little chain jerk on their neck. Because later on, the thing was dropped, but it took me an hour and a half of sitting there getting away on the side of the road with an empty truck. Oh, uh, can, you, can you do a favor for me? Sure. Don't, don't talk directly into the mic and repeat everything you just said because I, I was getting bits and pieces of it. See, I hadn't got my hearing aid in. Really? Okay, yeah. All right. I said I got pulled over by a DMT officer, empty, 
and got a 600 and change ticket for being overweight. Is he on drugs? <laughs> I know he said 27 years in the business, but I told him he was a jerk. And he gave me the ticket, and uh, I suggested that he go to my office to try to get the discrepancy figured out. But uh, he said, we don't do that kind of thing. And, uh, I think the law enforcement officer could be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm ex-law enforcement. And I always figured that it was easier to try to smooth things over than to just you know, slam people with heavy tickets and things. Uh, I used to work for your buddy there, Malcolm Beard, down in Tampa. And uh, I, I just thought he was a little way over the top. I don't know if he was just looking for, for tickets or what. That's your DOT for you here in Florida. Okay. What I want you to do is I actually want to know more about that. Have y'all paid the ticket? Oh, you got it in your pocket? So you hadn't paid it yet? Okay, here's what I want you to do. When we get through with the questions up here, that's where I'm going to give you my nose because I've already given up two ears. Okay? Just hang on to it. We're going to talk before we get through. We, we've got, we've got, listen, we've got one more question. Time restraints, I'm very sorry. I don't know if the uh, senator ever had any time afterwards. If he does, when he goes to the back room, I suggest you catch him before he goes out that door. This is the last question. Which, which is the back room? Right. Okay, I'll go that way and we can talk. So anybody that needs to talk with me, we can talk. I'll be, I'll be very brief. Um, in the affair that happened in Sanford, there was an apparent malicious prosecution of a man named Zimmerman with withholding of evidence about the prosecution. Are there going to be any repercussions whatsoever because of this prosecu prosecutor's misconduct? If I was a politician, I would assure you that that would be, uh, that would be the case and something's going to happen. But as a realist, there's nothing going on. It was a sad case where our justice system was abused very badly. Well, I understand. Hey, ma'am, I understand. You know, don't shoot the messenger, okay? Because you may be caring, so don't shoot me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, as a realist, you know, they will be talked to, but that's all. They should be, they should be prosecuted the for what they did. Yeah. And they should lose their license. Yeah, sure. Okay? Yeah. As a realist, that's what should happen. What's going to happen is nothing. Okay? A slap on me. Okay? okay. That, that was it for, okay, Randy. Sure. I think I like everything you're saying, but I have a big problem with saying as a realist, that's all that's going to happen. Because basically, a crime's been committed, you said that they should lose their license, and you're in legislation. We have a failure of our system, and this is just another problem that's culminating, and it's garbage. So what can we do, what can you do, and what should we do to make it change where something is done? Because saying that I'm a realist and nothing's going to happen too bad, sorry folks, go home, that's not where we live. We live under a constitution with laws. Let's start enforcing the laws. Okay, I can explain that very simply. I'd be glad to file a bill. I'd be glad to file a bill to make those changes. Okay? And I will get 17 votes. Well, I don't. Look, 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 listen, listen. I don't mind filing the bill, but I'm telling you it won't pass. Now, if you guys will get behind it, I don't mind filing the bill. And I don't mind pushing the bill. Okay? So I'm going to see you in Tallahassee. Yes, sir. Okay, fair enough. I'll fire the bill.
Look, you know, I was elected by a, a small group of folks up in the Panhandle, but I represent everybody in the state of Florida. Thank you. That's, that's going to be it. That's going to be it. Come on, not time restraints. Okay. One thing I want to tell y'all, he asked y'all some questions. Did you have your representative's phone number? Did you have your... Okay, I got a phone, and I put names in it. I even got one called DNA, do not answer. Okay, I know that I know that he doesn't even put names in his. I've got his phone number, and every time I call him, I have to say, hey, and he realizes who it is. So that means he doesn't do that. He just answers the phone. So he was right about that. So my question was, how many of them answer their phones for you? So uh, thanks, Senator Evans. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy. Thank all of you. Let's take and have a vote on my question. Okay, should I sentence them, put them in three to five years in prison, or should I get them treatment? All of those are put. Talk to him. He's going to the bathroom. Uh, ladies, you might not want to follow him. <laughs>